down, down, down. A Journey to the Bottom of the Sea, written by Steve Jenkins. Viewed from space, the earth looks like a watery blue ball. Oceans cover more than two thirds of the globe's surface and well over half the planet lies beneath water more than a mile deep. We have explored only a small fraction of the oceans. In fact, more humans have walked on the moon than have visited the deepest spot in the sea. In this book, we'll descend from the ocean's surface to the sea floor and travel through one of the most extreme environments on earth. Along the way, we will encounter some unusual creatures, which you can find more out about these animals at the back of this book. Above the surface, here, just above the surface of the Western Pacific Ocean, the air is warm. Below us, gentle swells move across the water. It's calm now, but during a storm, powerful winds can churn the surface into mountainous waves. The Pacific Ocean is the largest body of water on the planet, with an area greater than all the Earth's dry land combined. At this spot, the water is more than 13,000 feet deep. Most of life on land is found in a zone only a few hundred feet thick, from the top of the trees to just beneath the ground. The oceans, on the other hand, average two and a half miles in depth. They're, they are home to a vast majority of living things on our planet. The water below us teems with life. Sometimes without warning, the creatures of this hidden world burst into our own. Out of the water, they may be pursuing prey, escaping danger, or sending a message to others of their kind. Whatever the reason, sea creatures sometimes leap from the water into the air. A huge shark surging upward to grab its prey lands with a splash that could empty a swimming pool. A small sleek squid barely misses us as it shoots by, slipping back into the water with barely a ripple. Other creatures break the surface as well. It's a small world. Near the surface, the water is warm and brightly lit by the sun. Light-loving plants, algae and bacteria, most single-celled and too small to see with the naked eye, are found here in uncountable numbers. Almost all life in the sea depends upon these microorganisms, which use the sun's energy to help them manufacture their own food. They themselves are food for billions of animals, including shrimp-like krill. Krill and other small organisms that drift along with the ocean's currents are called plankton. Mackerel and other fish gather in enormous schools to feed on plankton. Big fish eat little fish. At a depth of just 33 feet, the sunlight is already beginning to fade. The pressure is increasing. When we are above the surface, the weight of air over our heads presses on every part of our body. The pressure isn't noticeable unless it changes. And when our ears pop in a fast elevator ride. Water is much heavier than air and already the pressure has reached two atmospheres, twice what we experience out of the water. We are about as deep as most humans can dive with scuba gear. Life flourishes here. Large, fast-swimming predators eat smaller fish, herding them together into a large, swirling ball. Seabirds, some capable of diving to depths of 220 feet, attack from above. Other animals feed on seaweed or jellyfish. Filter feeders. Not all large fish are fast-swimming hunters. Both the whale shark and the world's largest fish, the gigantic manta ray, feed directly on plankton. They strain any tiny plants and animals from the water passing over their gills. These filter feeders follow swarms of plankton from the surface to the depths of several hundred feet. Jellyfish and many others are also filter feeders trapping plankton with sticky tentacles or net-like antenna. Soft bodies. The light is fading and the pressure is now 10 atmospheres 
10 times as great as at the surface. Unlike air, water and other fluids don't compress much or get smaller under pressure. The bodies of most ocean animals are filled with fluid, so they don't have a problem with the pressure. Anything containing a hollow, air-filled space, such as a human body or a submarine, risks being crushed as it descends. Jellyfish are common here. Comb jellies, a family of soft-bodied, transparent animals distant, distantly related to jellyfish are plentiful. Jellies and combs are black brains, eyes, and a sense of smell. But they are efficient predators, capturing plankton and small fish with tentacles and sticky bodies. They rise from the depth at night to feed, returning to the safety of deeper waters at night. Oh, at dawn. Visitors from the deep. The twilight zone begins about 660 feet below the surface. From here down, there's not enough light for plants to survive. Only animals live below this depth. To us, it appears completely dark, but many of the creatures here have eyes that are specially adapted to the faint light. The sunlit waters with their rich variety of life are just above us. Animals that are rarely seen at the surface rise from deeper waters to hunt in the twilight zone. Glowing in the dark. Nine of every 10 animals that live below the sunlit layer of the ocean are bioluminescent. They can produce their own light. Animals use bioluminescence to lure prey, confuse or startle attackers, or make themselves difficult to see. Animals also use light to attract a mate, send messages to one another too. Because the ocean is so large and so many animals live here, bioluminescence is the most common form of animal communication on Earth. Only the slightest glimmer of sunlight reaches this depth and only animals with extraordinarily sensitive eyes can detect it. Lights out. We can see the animals living in these dark waters because we've brought along a light of our own. Without it, we would see nothing but blackness and the flicker and flash of animal bioluminescence. If we turn off our light, the scene on the previous page might look something like this. It's snowing. We've reached the dark zone. Not even the faintest sunlight can reach us here. It's getting colder and the pressure is enormous. Few submarines can dive this deep without being crushed. All around us, delicate marine snow is falling. It's composed of dead plankton, fish scales, animal waste, and bits of larger creatures that have died in the waters above. These particles are the basis of life here. Small animals feed on marine snow and become prey for larger hunters. Curiouser and curiouser. Animals that live in pitch black water have developed some unusual ways of defending themselves and finding prey. One deep sea shrimp squirts bright sticky goo into the face of an attacker. The hunter lit up with glowing gunk and unable to hide itself is likely to become a victim itself. Other dark zone creatures attack prey with glowing lures. The female hairy angler dangles her lure at the end of a stalk protruding from her head. She has a small fish attached to her side. It's the male hairy angler, which has fastened itself to the female with special teeth. Soon his body will fuse to hers and he will remain living off the female's body for the rest of his life. When do we eat? The water's very cold. We began our descent in warm tropical water but at these depths, the ocean is the same frigid temperature everywhere in the world. The pressure is so great that only a few research vessels can explore here. There are fewer animals to be found and the ones that do live here may have to go a long time between meals. Unlike the large fast swimming predators of the sunlit zone, most animals here are small and need less food. They ambush their prey waiting quietly for it to get close then lunging and grabbing with long, sharp teeth. Some hunters have a stomach 
that can stretch to many times its normal size, allowing them to swallow an animal that is larger than they are. Battle of the Giants. The sperm whale is the largest predator on the planet. Like all whales, the sperm whale is a mammal and it must come to the surface to breathe. As it hunts for giant squid, its favorite food, the sperm whale, dives deeper than any other air-breathing animal. When attacked, the giant squid fights back and many sperm whales are deeply scarred with squid sucker marks. The fierce battle of these giants take place in total darkness, marked only by bioluminescent flash of deep sea comb jellies and other small animals. Ooze. We've arrived at a flat, nearly featureless surface. It's the abysmal plain. Sediment and marine snow has drifted down from above for millions of years, forming a layer of ooze that may be thousands of feet thick. Most animals here survive by sifting food through mud for bits sifting through the mud for bits of food. A few are predators or scavengers eating other seafloor creatures and larger animals that die and sink to the bottom. Rocky outcrops here and there in the mud provide a habitat for the sea lily, an animal that looks like a plant, and other creatures that attach themselves to hard surfaces. Soon, we'll continue our descent. We'll have a long way to go before we reach the deepest part of the ocean. But first, we'll investigate what looks like a city of smoking towers. Turn up the heat. These structures are hydrothermal vents, sometimes called black smokers. The dark plumes are formed by minerals in the volcanically heated water. The water, which can be hot enough to melt lead, pours from openings or vents in the sea floor. The minerals in the water collect and form towers, some as tall as a 10-story building. Until recently, scientists believed that all life on Earth is dependent on sunlight. Plants use the sun's energy to make food and animals eat those plants. In the 1970s, however, oceanographers discovered communities of animals that get their energy from sulfur-loving bacteria. The bacteria feed on chemicals dissolved in the hot water. These vent creatures exist nowhere else on Earth. It's even possible that life on our planet began in a place like this. Not far from these vents, the seafloor drops away in a deep trench where we will continue our downward journey. How long can you go? Here, at the deepest spot in the sea, there is almost seven miles of water above our head. This is the Challenger Deep. It's the part, the Marina's Trench, a seafloor canyon in the Western Pacific Ocean. Humans have visited this place only once. In 1960, the U.S. vessel Triste reached the seafloor with two scientists aboard. The descent took five hours, but the men stayed on and to the bottom for only 20 minutes. Unmanned probes have explored the Challenger Deep on a few other occasions, but it's still one of the most remote places on Earth. The pressure here is 1,100 times greater than at the surface and the temperature is a constant 36 degrees. Even here, life can be found. Shrimp, worms, flatfish, and thousands of other kinds of bacteria live in ooze just above the muddy bottom.